DevOps engineers seem to have the magic touch that allows them to start new servers at the click of a button and scale your software to meet the demand of millions of potential users. If you've ever wondered how DevOps engineers do this, then I'm here to tell you it's not that complicated because I used to be a developer. I got an interest in DevOps and then I learned the skills to basically spend all my time doing DevOps. And in this video, I'm going to share my experience, how I went from a bog standard Java developer to a DevOps engineer who spends all day in the AWS console. And maybe if you want to do something similar, you can learn something along the way. First question is, what is DevOps? Well, I define it as applying development principles to operations who generally manage infrastructure, the servers on which your software runs, and also some of the tools that help developers write code faster, like continuous integration environments. The DevOps engineers can bridge the gap between development and operations. So they can use modern tools and the cloud to deploy all the infrastructure required to scale your software to however many users you want to reach. So if that's DevOps, why as a Java developer did I become interested in it? Well, I've been doing Java development for quite a long time, 13 years in total in my career. And for a lot of the roles I did, there was an operations team normally situated somewhere else in the office. And they always seemed to know the answers. If ever I had a problem with a server or a database or a network problem, I never felt empowered to be able to solve that myself. I would have to walk shyly over to the operations team, explain what was going on, and then normally they'd come up with the answer really quickly or they'd, they'd type something into a terminal and figure it out very easily. And over the years, my curiosity increased and I wondered what magic powers do these guys have that they can deploy servers and use tools with crazy names like Kubernetes. So over time, I managed to infiltrate my way into some of these operations teams. Eventually it got to a point where I was helping them out with some things. Like I remember I had some ideas to improve our continuous integration pipeline using a tool called Jenkins, which basically ran all of our tests whenever someone committed code. And when I actually tried out this tool Jenkins, I was surprised at how simple it was to use. And I was even more surprised that the operations slash DevOps team had been doing some things that weren't very good. Like rather than committing configuration files into Git, they'd just been doing things via the user interface. The point is, is when you start looking into what a team does, you realize that just like a development team, they're working with a collection of tools and trying to do the best they can with them. And often there's going to be some things that aren't very good, to put it bluntly. Something else that helped me learn about DevOps was landing a role where basically all of DevOps was the responsibility of the developers. There wasn't really an operations team as such. Basically, developers were given the hardware on which to run their software, and it was up to them to figure out what's the best way to do that. Unfortunately, this was a proprietary system that wasn't running in the cloud. It wasn't using tools like AWS. But I did learn quite a lot about networking, how to log into Linux servers and what commands you can use. But the thing that accelerated me into DevOps the most was the last role that I was on, where I started off as a Java developer. And because I saw so many opportunities to improve, for example, the application was run on a single server, which is extremely bad if you want high availability of your application. Things that to me were obvious that for whatever reason hadn't been implemented in this company made me really want to improve things. And because this was a small company with a development team less than 10 people, no separate operations or DevOps team, I took it upon myself to fix some of these problems. So one of the things that I fixed was I gradually moved some of the infrastructure, the servers onto AWS. But as much as I was trying to solve all of these problems, my knowledge of AWS was just what I'd picked up over the years and it didn't really have any solid foundation. So how did I fix this? I did what's probably quite a predictable thing to do. <laughs> I studied for one of the AWS certification exams and I picked the hardest one, which was Solutions Architect. I thought it would be a cool one to study for. First, I did the associate level and then I took the professional level. The good thing was I got a real solid understanding of AWS and its core services like S3 for storage or EC2 for compute. Once I gained these qualifications, I felt like I was in a much better place to be able to convince my bosses and also my colleagues that what I was working on and some of the things I was suggesting were a good idea. 
And around this point, the company kind of realized that AWS was going to be the way forward and hired another engineer who was more from the operations side. And me and him were basically the DevOps guys. Just to list out some of the things we worked on, improving the Jenkins continuous integration process and making it more scalable, setting up monitoring using Prometheus, deploying the core service as a container using AWS ECS, deploying other services as microservices, also as containers, and exploring ways to use some of the other AWS services like SQS for queues and the PubSub service SNS to implement some design patterns for upcoming features. So like like I said, in the end, I was spending all my day in front of the AWS console or an IDE with AWS CloudFormation templates, and it was great. And the other benefit from coming from a development background is that when I saw things that needed to be fixed in the application, I could go in and make those changes. And even though now I'm working on development projects again, I look after my own DevOps because I'm a one-man band building my own software projects, and I take care of everything using Amazon Web Services. So I hope that was useful. I'd love to know what interests you in DevOps, let me know down in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.